First, first of all, if you, if you consider a business that isn't coming to a finance application due to distress, and say they're looking to fund their business in, in, a, in a normal situation, then you have to look at probably what uh, the aspirations are of the owners of the business. So for instance, if, if they wished uh, to get rid of the business quickly, um, they had a short-term plan, say five years, to stay in the business, then you may be looking for VC or something like that. But if it's a family business, which is going to become a, a multi-generational business, then funding such as VCs, private equity, are probably going to be inappropriate. Um, if it's a distressed business, then I think it's going to be dependent upon the assets that the owners have, personally, and uh, what is not already secured against the bank land or something mm -hmm. of that nature. So we see a lot of businesses that apply for debt finance, you know, traditional loan finance. Um, and if they can't evidence or demonstrate to the lender that they can service that debt, then th that's not a suitable type of finance for them. Uh, possibly more early stage or very high growth businesses can't always evidence that they can service the level of debt that they're asking for, and they're perhaps more suited to an equity type investment. Mm. I think, I think the trend we're seeing at the moment is um, by the banks to generate revenue for themselves. And the easiest way and the best way for them to do this at the moment is businesses with um, order draft facilities try and convince them to go down the invoice factoring route uh, because they can generate huge fees for the bank on that. Uh, it's often a mistake for, I would say, most businesses to go down that route unless you're in, you're in a quite a high growth area and you, and you need that kind of facility but I think one piece of advice I give my clients on that is if you are considering going down the invoice discounting route or factoring route choose a different bank to the one you're banking with currently because if things do go wrong they will take the factoring facility and the overdraft facility off together at least you've got two bites of the cherry with two different banks they may not necessarily like that but you've got an option of doing that I think from the public sector, uh, we do realise it's complicated out there, we know what funding is available and we have tried to come together and work with our partners to try and come up with funding options for businesses and try to make it more simplified on the grants and loan side and we do have you know, a number of eligibility checks and we work closer with the access to finance specialists who can sort of sit down, do an action plan and sort of signpost into the relevant funding option whether it be private sector or public sector. Uh, but as I said, we are trying to make it more easier for businesses to access public sector funding. The types of businesses that have been accessing Business Angels, the yeah. IT side has yeah. seen quite a number of uh, propositions to the Business Angels network on the IT side, seems to be the growth side, um, from internet based, tend to be around internet based, don't they? Worldwide market, not just you know national, so some, some good potential companies there to invest in, it's just obviously finding the right investor. Is this a private angel financial through the Well, in just in general, really. I mean, oh, but okay. from Northwest Business Angels' perspective, we've got businesses coming to us from, from all sectors. There is a kind of tendency towards uh, kind of IT Who's Northwest Business? That's private. private. Yeah. Northwest Business Angels. Not is the, money. It's a oh, no, NDA service. Right, okay. But it is private individuals. Yeah. On I the can network. carry on doing the advert. There's, we've got about 127 individuals who yeah, say exactly. they would like to invest in businesses, and we just put the two together. So you actually is a broker then? Um, Marriage broker. Well, is it, yeah, it's. Um, mm. Put it's them very, together then, no, no more contact. Yeah. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, further responsibility. it's blind yes. date. We don't yeah. charge any fees. We don't give advice. We just put the two parties in a room together and. And, and also mentor the, the individuals, entrepreneurs as well, that service is free to try and get them ready and have a, you know, a financial proposition ready for the day as well. So there is the softer side of support available. If a business is talking to the existing bank or another bank on facilities, get an outside advisor to advise you on that or have a look around and see what other options there are. Rather than, especially uh, these days where the, your existing bank will go in for um, an annual uh, renewal or just a, a chat and they will present a document in front of you which will be two, three percentage points more than what you previously signed up for. Just get it checked independently by somebody else or get your business advisor to help you with that. Here's an example of how Northwest businesses have obtained successful funding. 
Hey, my name is Tom Fuller. Uh, I'm the Managing Director of Cognoscenti Compliance. We set up uh, about 18 months ago now, in May 2008, um, as a software company providing uh, environmental uh, legislation support and software. Since then, really, we've obviously been looking for funding to keep the business going, to get us up and started. Um, we've looked down several routes, um, banks, private investors, um, grant money, um, loans, any other bits and pieces that can be tapped up on for being an environmental company. A strong business plan was probably the main thing here, you know, defining exactly what your business is, uh, what you're going to achieve and what it's going to take you to get from the start to basically that point where you're going to achieve it. Um, and that's not just capital, but it's also um, what sales you're going to need to make and everything really, be as, be as um, all encompassing as possible in that uh, and uh, that was the main thing um, and a bit of confidence as well really to get there. My name is Phil Tapsell, the company is Tech Venture Solutions. I work as a business advisor for Northwest based businesses. Yeah I've worked with, uh, worked with a, family, a family business that was uh, a more traditional manufacturing type business and they didn't want to go down the private equity route um, for a number of reasons. I think the first one was the type of business that they were wouldn't have really fit with the key selection criteria for a private equity investment. Uh, secondly, they didn't want to give away uh, the equity in the business. It was family and they wanted to pass it on to, uh, to, their, to their children. Uh, the role of the business advisor is, is very important in, in helping early stage businesses and especially high growth businesses. Uh, they can guide the business on creating a really powerful business plan and also uh, help the, the business be prepared and ready to stand up and pre present convincingly to uh, whoever the funder may be. Um, they ask really hard questions, question all key assumptions, kill a lot of sacred cows and a lot of the time that's very important for, uh, for, for young businesses um, because then they know that all of their key assumptions have been questioned right down to bedrock. Funding is a very complex issue. For many businesses, taking things one step at a time and getting good advice along the way is essential for success. Next time we're going to be looking at how businesses can grow good relationships with their funding partners. And actually all this talk of funding just reminds me, I need some of my own.